Set usen na sa who is he? Let's talk about him succinctly. Set usen na sa was born in Tehran on April 7th, 1933. He is a philosopher, a philosopher of science and a traditionalist. His father, Wali Nasser, who held the position of Minister of Education at the end of the Koya dynasty under Reza Shah, was very concerned about Nasser's traditional education, such as reading and memorizing verses of the Quran, and prominent Persian poems such as those of Sa'di and Hafiz. The influence of Nasser's traditional education on his intellectual developments was very significant. Nasser said, The classical and traditional Persian education in the early years of my life left an indelible mark on my mind, as the stories of the Quran and the poems of Sa'di and Hafiz were embedded in the deepest layers of my soul during that period. At the same time, those years even brought me face to face with the presence of another worldview the modern West, which at that time seemed both attractive and threatening. In 1945, after the end of World War II, when he was 12 years old, Nasser studied in America. He graduated in 1954 from Massachusetts Institute of Technology. In 1958, when he was 20 years old, Nasser completed his doctoral dissertation in Islamic cosmology. This dissertation was later published in a book entitled An Introduction to Islamic Cosmological Doctrine, Conceptions of Nature and Methods Used for Its Study by the Ikhwan Sofa, Al-Biruni, and Ibn Sina. In the same year, Nasser returned to Iran and taught at University of Tehran. Then he continued his education with some of Iran's foremost scholars. Three prominent Iranian philosophers, such as Said Muhammad Kazim Ashar, Alama Said Muhammad Hussein Toba Tobai, and Said Abul Hassan Rafi'i. During the Iranian Revolution of 1979, he left Iran and stayed in America after the fall of the Shah. In this country, America, Nasser was appointed a professor of Islamic studies at Temple University, Philadelphia until 1984. In the 1990s, he became professor of Islamic studies at George Washington University. Nasser's works refer to the theme of humans in the contemporary world, especially in the West, that, according to him, can no longer understand and appreciate sacred things. Gifford lectures in which he delivered his writing in 1981 and it was published as a book entitled Knowledge and the Sacred express his hope of reviving what he calls the sacred science, scientia sacra, in contrast to secularized reason. He is an eloquent opponent of contemporary ideologies such as modernism, rationalism, secularism, materialism, and he always delivered the concept of the immutable principle best described in traditional Islam. His writings clearly demonstrate his aim to interpret Islamic civilization to skeptical Western readers and attack secularization that have alienated the Westerners from their faith and threatening Muslims as well. Nasser is a thinker who is concerned with the integration of philosophy, science, and art. He devoted himself to explaining the essential unity of all existence as a reflection of the oneness of God. He views the secularization of the natural sciences and the destruction of the Earth's balance that appear in today's environmental crisis to be a picture of the essential disharmony in the relationship between humans and God. The term Philosophia Brainis itself was first introduced in the Western world by Augustine Stucco in his work The Perenni Philosophia, which was published in 1540. The term was popularized by Leibniz in a letter written in 1715, which emphasized that in the search for traces of truth, actually one is dealing with Philosophia Perennis. But the reality of perennial philosophy remained closed for a very long time by the dominant secular school of philosophy in the West. It was only in the 20th century that the concept of perennial philosophy came to the full. In fact, this philosophy in the 20th century has been given the deepest and purest meaning beyond that understood by his predecessors as in the writings of Fritz of Schwann who closely followed the works cited by René Kennan and Kumaraswamy. 
Philosophia Berenice is defined as eternal truth and has no beginning. NASA calls it metaphysical truth which has no beginning and which remains the same in all expressions of wisdom. The equivalent term of the phrase other than religio Berenice in Latin is sanata terma. In Sanskrit, or al hikmah al khalida in Arabic. While the main agenda in this philosophy is first about God, the absolute being, the source of all existence. The absolute being or the supreme being is one, so all religions that arise from the one are in principle the same because they come from the same source. Second, perennial philosophy wants to discuss religious pluralism critically and contemplatively. Even though there is only one true religion with the capital R, but because it was revealed to humans in a historical and sociological spectrum, then like the light of the sun that appears with various colors, religion in a historical context is always present in a pluralistic format. Third, perennial philosophy seeks to trace the roots of a person's or group's religious awareness through symbols, rites, and religious experiences. In order to know further about this philosophia perennis or religio perennis, it is necessary to mention the elements intertwined within it. These elements are tradition, sentia sacra, and esoteric, exoteric, or internal, external. Said Usenasa explains that the meaning of tradition is truth or principles of a divine origin revealed or unveiled to humankind and in fact a whole cosmos through various figures considered as messenger, prophets, avatars, the law cause, or other transmitting agencies along with all the ramifications and applications of these principles in different realms including law and social structure, art, symbolism, science, and embracing of course supreme knowledge along with the means for its attainment. NASA also states tradition implies the sacred, the eternal, the immutable truth, the perennial wisdom as well as the continuous application of its immutable principles to various conditions of space and time. From his words, it is clear that tradition is not the same as understood in religious discourse in general, no in Islam in particular. In religious discourse, tradition is interpreted as the content of religion in the form of ceremonies, myths, dogmas, ethics, or other elements of the ultimate divine or of quasi-divine authority which are inherited from one generation to another. While in Islamic discourse, tradition is interpreted as sunnah or hadith or can also be equated with turath. Scientia sacra is sacred knowledge which is at the heart of every revelation. It is the center and circle in which tradition is directed and determined. This knowledge comes from revelation and intellectual or illuminated intuition. In Eastern languages, the suitable term for Scientia sacra is prajna or ma'rifa. The focus of the study of Scientia Sacra is the principle. The principle is a reality different from all things that seem real, but not really real in the perfect sense. The principle is the absolute while everything else is only relative. The principle is infinite while the others are finite. It is one and unique while the others manifest themselves in various forms. It is substance while the others are accidents. It is essence while the others are forms. It is the beginning and the end, the alpha and omega. The other dimensions of the study contained in Santia Sacra are about the cosmos, traditional anthropology, psychology, and aesthetics. From this, a common thread can be drawn that the focus of the study of Santia Sacra is none other than the main agenda discussed in Philosophia Perennis or Perennial Philosophy. As for the external, internal, or esoteric, exoteric dimensions, NASA explains it in the framework of Sufism. In Sufism, it is known that there is an explanation that the universe has an outer form, outward form, or surah, and an inner essence, ma'na. Surah refers to the multiplicity of the word, and ma'na refers to the unity that is the origin of all things. The study of religion can also refer to this model that is from its various external forms with its essence which is one unit because the source of all reality, including the reality of religion, is one God. According to Nasser, difference and diversity is the beginning to unity. Nasser explains, unity cannot manifest itself without entering into the world of multiplicity. 
This is the path taken by NASA in dealing with the problems of dialogue and religious pluralism that generalizes all religious teachings because the attempt to reduce all religions to be the same and have one thing in common is unacceptable and will even lead to the replacement of divine authority by human understanding. NASA also doesn't want to fall into the mystics of some Western experts who promote the ecumenism movement, a movement that seeks to find common ground between religious groups which under certain circumstances sacrifices God-ordained qualities for the sake of human egalitarianism. The so-called ecumenism is nothing more than a hidden form of secularism and humanism that dominated the West during the Renaissance. The true ecumenism must be an attempt at an essential and transcendent unity and not an attempt at uniformity which destroys all qualitative difference. Nasser as a Muslim asserts that Islam also supports his thinking. In Nasser's words, this character of Islam is directly connected with the fact that it is both the primordial religion and the last religion in the present life of humanity. Islam considers itself to be the primordial religion, Adin al-Hanif, because it is based on the doctrine of unity which has always existed and which lies in the nature of things. Every religion has been ultimately based on the doctrine of unity so that in Islam it is said that the doctrine of unity is unique At-Tawhid al-Wahid There is only one doctrine of unity which every religion has asserted and Islam came only to reaffirm what has always existed and thus to return to the primordial religion which was at the beginning and will always be the eternal Sophia, the religio Baranis. In analyzing Nasser's perennial philosophy, it cannot be said separated from studying tradition, religion, Santya Sakra, and al hikma al khalidah Those have a relationship that can be explained that tradition is the widest part of a web of a single transcendent value, while within the tradition there are religions such as Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, and others. In this case, NASA said, in this sense, tradition is a more general concept of embracing religion. However, the root of tradition is religion. The science trying to understand the transcendent unity amongst religions is called Scientia Sacra, while its transcendent values underlying it are Al Hikmah Al Khalida, perennial wisdom, from which this channel was named. I'll be detailing the thoughts of the perennial philosophers and the thoughts of Seth Usenasa in particular on my next videos. See you.